Greetings, my fellow servants of chaos. Welcome back to Rogue Trader. Today we're going to pick up where we left off, which is to say, still in the middle of a giant mutiny, but now with more warp intrusions than before. Also, there's a warp entity in our head, uh, which is bad. It's the Ash Heritor. Uh, I'm not sure if I already mentioned that. I don't know. It could be the Warp Madness making me forget things. It uh, does that from time to time. Death to the False Emperor. Um, so, yeah, we're going to uh, we're gonna continue on. We've been joined by Idira, who is a Psyker, a Diviner. Uh, she's got some telepathy abilities, too. So she's really actually kind of what I wanted to make Cyrene. So hopefully there's not too much character overlap. And depending on how we can build our characters, we're going to try and build them differently. I'll probably make her much more of a combat you know, damage dealer type of Psyker, and we'll keep Cyrene as a, uh, a support character. And we've been joined by our sister Argenta, a member of the Adeptus Sororitas, who uh, doesn't like the fact that she has two Psykers with her. Uh, the Adeptus Sororitas are battle nuns, and they don't like Psykers, or heretics, or aliens, or demons, or really anything that is at all even a little bit against the Emperor. So we now need to uh, make our way to... That's a great question. We need to get to Theodora von Valencius's personal quarters, our rogue trader, because she, you know, we know that uh, her, our other heir, um, what was his name? Uh, Ed Edelard? No, wait, this is Abelard. Ed Edel, Edel, Edelred? Edel something? I, I don't know. The, the Abelard and Edel something are confusing me because they're both like Saxonic names and they sound kind of similar. Uh, we made it to the Navigator Sanctum, and he is going to basically translate the ship out of the warp, even though it's probably going to kill him. He is already possessed, but he's holding off whatever has possessed him. So, yeah, we need to, uh... We need to find the other Edelthrad. That's it. Edelthrad. Okay. Edelthrad Abelard. You can see why they're a bit confusing. Both very, uh, you know, Old English... Saxonic names, if you would. So, uh, now I'm not sure the exact direction we need to go. And of course, I Let do us not dawdle. want to dawdle. <laughs> so we're going to head into here, into this room, and see what there is to be this found. This ocular implant was a worthwhile investment. Ocular implant. Oh, what do we have here? The Lord Captain's Quarters. That's where we needed to go. Isn't that nice? And we found some more cargo. Even nicer. This is, uh, can't be equipped by this character. Can't be equipped by me, yeah, because I'm a complete dunce when it comes to medical stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not talk about it. I always have a backup plan. Do you? I'm glad. Oh, man. Lots of stuff. Profane blades. Ooh. Monomolecular edged bayonets. Nice carbon, fire, carbon fiber plates. Data conduit cable coils. And diamantine armor plating. Very cool. You know, they could just be, like, this much value of ship components cargo, but they actually, like, you know, make different things for each one, which is cool. It gives a little bit of character to what you're doing, uh, which I like. Well, what do we have in here? What is this thing? This clearly does not serve as a stateroom. The generators, machines, and crude wall paneling indicate that it is a maintenance module room rather than an area for receiving guests. Yet I always are. keep my options open. We're going to open this door as well and uh, sneak around, find some goods. What do we got? Lex Mechanics Goggles will give us plus three logic and some more machine right sets. A set of sacred oils and cogitative brands that can appease the keeper of any technology provides an additional opportunity to call out a machine spirit and interact with the device, an expendable item. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This will allow us to, like, reuse a computer. Is there money to Speaking be made? of computers that we can use, what is this? Plasma conduits blaze with energy capable of powering a vast void ship. All right, sounds good to me. Probably shouldn't shoot those with anything. That would be bad. Uh, let's check the, uh, the thing, the goggles. So, who has the best logic? I've got 40, you've got 30, you've got 30, you've got 30. I'm the most logical person here, and that is terrifying. So, I'm going to equip these goggles. Oh, yeah, I've got some sick-looking... <laughs> All right. <laughs> Always keep your eye on the prize. All right. Also, also, 
I I mentioned earlier when we were like looking at the uh, character sheets that you know this is a D100, a percentile based system, and the reason why I like percentile based systems is because there is a whole lot of granularity. You can get all these little teeny micro upgrades and really make it feel like you're. Uh, because I'm a, I'm a developer of a pen and paper RPG, which is why I'm giving this type of insight here. Um, which is why that allows you to like give these teeny little micro upgrades that means that the upgrading you get doesn't come in big blocks like it does in, say, D&D, where you have just levels and you really are only getting so many levels. And in between the levels, you're not really advancing your character aside from any gear or other narrative-based things you might find. Uh, whereas with like a, a really granular... Um, the percentile based system you can get these tiny little upgrades that you know it still feels like you're doing something even though like the upgrade isn't very big but over time it adds up and that, that feels kind of cool um, now unfortunately the rogue trader system sort of uses it but it doesn't use it to its full potential like everything is done in groups of or in uh, increments of five and ten which ultimately makes it kind of kind of just makes it a d20 based system just they use the percentiles because percentiles are easy to visualize uh which is nice but here we do actually have them going up by just three which is that's kind of good uh, i just you know I, I wish the system had a little bit more granularity because it has the framework to allow for more granularity i personally work with a d20 based system with the system that i am creating but i have granularity in that like you spend XP to get stuff, much as you did in the old Rogue Trader and Dark Heresy system, which it doesn't seem like they're doing in this game, unfortunately. Um, it's not an XP buy system, it is a level up system. So, you know, yeah. Anyways, just a little thought. Let's go to the Lord Captain's Quarters, this is where we wanted to go anyways. The Lord Captain's Quarters. We have found the secret lift, and we have ascended the secret lift. Now we are in the Lord Captain's, our Rogue Trader Master's private quarters, and uh, naturally, we're going to loot the shit out of it. Items and convictions. You have found an item that can only be equipped by characters of certain conviction rank. Oh, that's cool. You can open the character menu to see which conviction your character follows. Note that both your character and their companions have their own convictions. You can check what conviction a character adheres to on the convictions tab of the character menu. Okay. Well, we'll have a look. Of course, I am here myself. Where is the convictions? Convictions, convictions. This would be this thing right here. So, I have gone towards Iconoclast, which this does... Oh, when one of the conviction branches reaches rank 3 votary, it becomes the character's main focus. When that happens, the other two conviction branches cannot be raised above rank 2 adherent. Belief in the value of human life and freedom. Faith in the power of goodwill, capable of overcoming the horrors and dangers of the universe without the need for artificial prohibitions. The desire to seek out the common ground and compromise rather than uncompromising destruction. Okay, so Iconoclast seems like the good guy route, because this is the zealot one. This is the dogmatic um, belief in the holiness and infallibility of the laws of Imperium, of the Imperium, adherence to the precepts of the God Emperor and the Holy Chosen Ones, carrying out his will to the ignorant and unruly masses, unfettered hatred of the enemies of mankind, be they traitors, heretics, xenos, or servants of chaos. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> this is, uh, the, the lunatic crazy devotees of the emperor one and then of course the heretical ones this is going to be sketchy um we'll we'll have a quick look here um devotion to the corruption and taint of the warp through total submission to the basest and darkest impulses of the soul or constant worship of the ancient gods of the immaterium yeah that uh sounds nice real nice oh i want to actually look and see what each character is so we're edging towards Iconoclast. I want to guess. I'm guessing Adelard. Oh, oh my god. I'm guessing this guy is also going to be Iconoclast. Correct. Okay. I'm guessing Indra here is going to be... Ooh, she's tricky. Definitely not dogmatic. I'm going to guess she's also Iconoclast. Perhaps maybe a bit heretical. 
Okay, heretical. Good to know. Uh, and then Argenta is obviously going to be dogmatic. Yes. She's already an adherent, so she's <laughs> she can't go any further. Whereas she could still switch to Iconoclast, and I mean, uh, I'm fine with him staying Iconoclast. I reckon there's going to be a bit of... Uh... Ooh, and then we get a, uh, a Puritan and Fanatical. Okay, this is interesting. Puritan... Follows, or Puritans follow the doctrines and laws of the Imperium to the letter. Making compromises with Xenos or using the weapons of the enemies of humanity is anathema to them. Anyone who suggests otherwise, uh, they consider a heretic who deserves nothing but the severest of punishments. Or we can go fanatical. Radicals are willing to push the boundaries of what is permissible in the quest for tools and means to achieve their goals. They often use Xenos weaponry and even the creations of chaos for their own ends. Many radicals are punished for their heretical acts or fall victim to their own dubious methods. I think we're going to go radical rather than Puritan. I'm going to go a uh, uh, radical iconoclast. Probably not going to use too much chaos stuff, but, you know, maybe a little. When has a little bit of chaos ever killed anyone? What PR? Psy rating. Ah, and I am zero PR, so I'm just a I'm just a chump. Okay. Whereas she's an actual psyker. Neither of you guys are psychers. I'd be very concerned if Argenta here was a psyker, but uh, she's not, so everything's fine. Uh, what is this? This is just a uh, a fountain. Nice, nice fountain. Rise right. to the top, or get left in the dust. Okay, sounds good to me. I'd rather rise to the top, preferably. Okay. Uh, that's not a good sign. Nor is that. Oh, that's an even worse sign. Ah, Theodora. Sleeping on the cherry juice again. Oh, the weird, uh... Weird evil-looking mist. Seeping around. Uh, a bit concerning. So, uh, I let's, always have a backup plan. Instead of looking at the rogue trader's uh, corpse, let's uh, just look around here, see about things. The one thing that's kind of annoying is when you press down control, which is the thing that highlights stuff, Keep you can't turn you. the camera. Ooh, another guard hat. Dogmatic follower. Helm of the Devoted Protector. Requires Dogmatic Follower. This helmet grants the wearer immunity to critical hits for the first three rounds of combat. That sounds good. We can give that to, uh... The Emperor Sister sets my path. Argenta. This does not look right on her. It just doesn't. We're gonna... Not show helmet. It's a, it's a necklace. <laughs> the Necklace of the Dogmatic Protector. Uh... We'll just not worry about her. I'm sure everything's fine. So, so get up, and we'll laugh about this later. So it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be just I okay. I always keep my options open. What about up here? That looks like a sketchy room. Is this just a? You just have this in your personal quarters, this glowing pit into. Let us not dawdle. Is this where you throw Sith lords into? All right. Let's have a quick look here. Theodora von Valantius' body is sprawled on a large blood wrench desk. The Arch Militant's corpse, still clutching a weapon, is slumped against one of the bulkheads. Oh, who is the Arch Militant again? I mean, aside from being dead, that was Mort, right? Where's Mort? I I can't see him. Oh, that that's Mort. Ah. Yeah. Makes sense. That's uh that's bad. Emperor, except by faithful. Her gaze lingers on the arch militant's body. I really wish it would read this out, because this is important. Why does she why is she lingering on the arch militant's body rather than the rogue traitor? Interesting. No! I Lord Captain! I didn't hear! Didn't hear a thing! Not a whisper, not a breath! It was it was so loud! Why didn't I foresee this? Okay. She actually, uh, some. Her voice actor is really good. Just wanna, wanna point that out. Uh, okay, that's. She actually seems to care. Whereas Ar Argenta, much more interested in Mort here. Interested to know why. Yeah. No. Lord Captain. Who would even dare? 
Unless that rat, Voidfear. Um, yeah, um, I doubt it. Voidfear wished humiliation and suffering upon Theodora, not a swift death. It could have happened in the heat of battle. Not to mention that Mort was here. And he would have protected yeah. Lady Theodora to the last. It's a good point. It could have still been Voidfear. How could Mort have failed her so terribly? The Arch Militant was born on a death world. He had lightning fast reflexes. I think that's a talent that people that are born on death worlds get. That's some meta shit there, Abelard. <laughs> 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 I, I can look at things in my own way. If you find something, something that might bear the imprint of the killer, just give it to me, and I'll try to see what secrets it holds. Okay, let's look at Theodora's body. You lean closer to the body. The cause of death is apparent. What ended the rogue trader's life was an auto pistol shot, an extraordinarily accurate one at that. Theodora's face bears the expression of surprise, the last emotion she experienced in life. Wow, felt by an auto pistol. That's like a chump weapon. I mean, okay, it's it's a gun. Guns, as it turns out, kill people. But it's just like you know, rogue trader. You'd think she'd have like a refractor field or. A Rosarius, probably not a Rosarius, but some sort of device that would have protected her, at least armor, but I mean All them heroes gotta be walking around without helmets. It's not helpful if you get shot in the face. I hate helmetless hero tropes. I mean, meanwhile I'm doing that for uh Argenta here. Um, well, if we find her a sister of Battle Helmet, she's absolutely going to put that on. It just doesn't work with her current, you know, get up. All right. Um, that's interesting. Seems like Void Fear type of stuff. Extraordinary accurate, though. This this does imply that this was that there wasn't a fight, so that seems less like Void Fear. The plot thickens. Who done it? Was it Mort? Kind of suspecting maybe it was Mort. Something on the floor catches your eye. A heap of blood-spattered parchments and scrolls that must have fallen off the desk. As you lean for a closer look, you notice something else. Small shards of glass scattered on the floor. Idira, would you try touching Theodora? You might be able to see the killer through her eyes. It doesn't work like that. I can try to read the memories of mm. objects. But dead bodies are a different story. Something like that would require her soul. And after what we saw on the officer's deck, I won't risk searching for it in the warp. Yeah, that's fair. Let's inspect the shards by the desk. It's difficult to say what exactly was broken. The object fell on the floor, and that is as much as you can ascertain. Upon closer examination, the shards appear iridescent, rather than completely transparent, as if they had been submerged in Prometheum. Is this... This Flex? It sounds like Flex. If you don't know what Flex are, it's probably because you haven't read the Ravener series. Flex are a weird-ass type of drug that basically... Spoiler alert, so skip ahead a minute or so. Flex are shards of broken glass from the windows of a former hive world, so a city planet, that had been lost in a warp storm for thousands of years. The shards, all of the broken shards of the windows of this world that had fallen to the ground soaked up the raw vista of the warp in the sky for thousands of years. And basically, looking into one of these shards gives you these hallucinations um, that are most of the time calming, yet also very addictive. But sometimes it goes very wrong, and... Yeah. I mean, warp stuff is dangerous. I don't know if that's what this is, but it would be really cool if it had a tie-in with Flex, because they were traded throughout the Imperium. Ravener, uh, Gideon Ravener did put a stop to the Flex trade, but, you know, that is, who's to say that it didn't start up again somewhere else? Idira, what do these shards tell you? I see streaks 
of color, luminescence, blue lights, faces, drawing closer, Lady Theodora, and Kunrad, and what is that? Ah! Something dark, enormous. Oh, this glass thing was something foul, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's not good. Also, what's... What's happening here? Why are there dark ephemeral tentacles coming from this pipe organ? Tainted witchcraft. <laughs> you cannot tell if Argenta's remark is directed at the glass shards or Idira herself. Let's inspect the papers. Reports, accounts, dispatches, you go over the scrolls until you stumble upon a document that is starkly different from the rest. It is a handwritten letter signed with the initials XC, and a seal with a symbol that is vaguely familiar to you. Okay, handwritten letter with a seal. Are we talking like a, like a, you know, a stamp seal or an arf arf seal? What, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it's a stamp seal, but you never know. It could be an arf arf seal. What if it's both? Okay. and sends a shiver down your spine. The author of this letter, or yeah, the author of this letter, addressed to Theodora von Valantius, signed it with the seal of the Holy Ordos of the Emperor's Inquisition, the secret police of the Imperium that relentlessly hunts heretics, Xenos, and other enemies of humanity. Ah, okay. Well, the Inquisition is the secret in organization tasked with hunting down the myriad threats to the stability of the Imperium and all mankind. So, uh, thing to know about the Inquisition, if you're not familiar. They are above the law, they do whatever the fuck they want, and, uh, the only thing policing them is themselves, really. Technically, they answer, they're, they're, they're part of the, or their leader is part of the High Lords of Terra, so they're supposed to sort of work in congregation, uh, congruence with the factions, with the other factions of the Imperium, but rogue inquisitors are a thing that happens. <laughs> a lot. And the only solution to a rogue inquisitor is to send another inquisitor after them, really. Um, there are three different branches, oh, there's more than three, but the three main branches of the Inquisition are the Order Hereticus, which deals with uh, heretics and mutants, witches, rogue psychers, which are witches mostly, but not always. And uh, cults, that type of stuff. Most of which are heretic, but not always. Then you have the Ordo Xenos, which specifically deals with uh, alien threats, internal and external to the Imperium. There are internal alien threats. The Imperium is often infiltrated by alien agents. One of the most dangerous ones are the Gene Stealer cults, but uh, there are more. There's, of course, Eldar, uh, the Eldari, and the, uh, the Drukari, which are the same species, but. Uh, one's a little more twisted than the other, and various other alien groups that are present within the Imperium's borders. Uh, and then there is, of course, the Ordo Malleus, which deals with threats from the beyond, the warp, specifically demons. Any other warp entities, really, but Ordo Malleus's main beef is with demons. Now, not naturally, there's quite a lot of overlap. You have plenty of Xeno species that consort with chaos, and are quite capable of summoning demons themselves. Uh, there are plenty of Xeno species that obviously form cults within the Imperium, like the Gene Stealers. And um, so th there's a bit of overlap between the uh, different Inquisitorial factions. But anyways, I'd be interested to know which one she was talking to. So that's kind of interesting. Let's let's check the Arch Militant's body. We'll slowly walk our way there. Very slowly, dear God. An auto pistol shot went straight through Mort's forehead, spraying the floor and furniture around with blood, brain matter, and shards of his skull. The safety of on the arch militant's weapon is off. The killer must have been a split second quicker than he. Okay. We had best be on that that's all we have to say. Yes, the crucible of battle calls to me once more. All right, she just wants to shoot things, which is no, understandable. No, wait! We must see if we can find anything. Idira, you can't bring her back. Let her go. Okay, Abelard is just like the reasonable. We got we got these two crazies here, although I think she, Argenta is probably the crazier one here. Idira 
seems somehow naive, which makes sense why she's fallen under the heretic path. But, uh, actually, you, you might be thinking, like, well, naive and heretic d don't go together? Well, yes, they do. <laughs> You'd give up so easily, old man? I expected as much from the sister. It's not like she has a heart. But you? Oh, no. Oh, no. I'll get to the bottom of this. I'll find the one responsible for murdering the Lord Captain. And when I do, that scum will regret the day they were born. She pissed. <laughs> Did we get to pick, like, what we do? Okay, I'm not sure why it sent me off into the void, but okay. Um, can we... The murder scene looks like something caught the victims by surprise. No one had time to react to what was happening. Yeah, that's... That's concerning. Can we loot this box? <laughs> All right. Theodora's Rosary. The wearer of this amulet gains a plus 10 bonus to commerce and lore Imperium. I'm, uh, I'm gonna take that myself, if you don't mind. All righty then. Thank you. It doesn't show up on the character. That's all right. I, I like it when gear shows up on the character, but I also understand uh, that's not always going to be the case. Uh, the parlor organ seems to have been sitting idle for many years. Okay, but what about the black ephemeral tentacles? Oh, they're just coming out of everywhere. Is that's there probably money just to been, be made? Like, the ship and the warp transit. This can just happen. All right, what is this room? Oh, hi. Servitors and heretics. Oh, my. Your doom has been foretold. Hi. Okay. All right, uh, Adelard is going to... One sec to put him here on the flank. He's not, like, super well armored. We can put myself right back here. What are these things? Are, do I have to worry about them exploding? Argenta, you can go here in the middle, and we'll put Idira here on this flank. All right, let's start the battle and hope we roll initiative. Light and medium armor. Armor protects the character from incoming damage. Light and medium armor types are both available to you at the moment. The armor stat indicates what percent of incoming damage from an enemy attack it can absorb. The type of armor also influences the chances that the character wearing it will pass a dodge test. The higher the dodge penalty, the lower the chance to dodge an enemy attack. See, this is what I meant in the previous episode where I like the armor system in this game. So much more than the armor system in D&D, which is dumb as hell. I'm sorry if you like D&D. Armor does not make you harder to hit. <laughs> it is damage reduction. Uh, in fact, heavy armor should make you easier to hit because you are less able to move out of the way. So, yeah, it's it's cool. I, I like this a lot. Uh, my own game system is very similar to this. Armor is damage reduction. And, and it's it's beefy. Like, plate armor makes you nigh invulnerable to physical attacks. Unless, you know, the enemy can flank you and hit, hit you in a weak point. Uh, so, looks like uh, it's going to be Adelard going first. So he has Endure here. So we could actually... He is actually quite tough. He's I will warrior. do my duty. So we're going we're gonna to do Endure. Then we're going to have him charge. Take out this guy. Take... Yeah. Let's engage in melee. Get him. You're dead. Exceptionally dead, even. And we'll have him a brace for impact. Because he's probably going to take some flak here. Now we can't do anything else, because I only have one point left. I kind of wish we could have moved a little Someone closer. Someone else can do this. So, that, uh... Yeah, I should have moved closer with the charge. That's what that comes down to. So, um... Give him forewarning, because he's about to be in the thick of things. Then, I'm going to give voice of command to Argenta. Argenta will then have an upper time, um, yeah, increasing their characteristics by 11. So that'll be for shooting. And then bring it down. We could give it to her as well. I'm, I'm gonna do it. That'll be our turn. Cool. Um, all right, Argenta's turn. Well, she can now shoot things. Oh, we can do a lot of shooting right here. We put, put in quite a lot of DACA. We could get closer as well. So, can I, uh, can I just move? What's, what's going on here? Why can I not move? We are clicking on her. Can we just not move the person? Oh, yeah, we have no movement points. That's interesting. All right, well, shoot the I'll hell out it. of them. Solid. Not bad. Furious recital. 
Grants momentum equal to 8. This ability grants an additional 4 momentum for each enemy. No, I'll wait on that until she's surrounded. End turn. Okay, Cyrene von Valantis. Ah, I'm... So she immediately got to take an action. That's what happened there. Ah. Aha! I get it. No movement points. I was using bring it down. That's what allowed Argenta to shoot. Fucking hell, so I can just do that, and then she can do that. Oh, that's that's cool. That's cool. Alright, uh, my turn's over. <laughs> Enemy status. Various abilities and features. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you, you can do right mouse button on an enemy to learn more about them. Awesome. Good to know. Oh, shit. He has a thermal multi-melt. Uh, he's got to die. Well, we can make him die. Uh, but I'd rather actually precision blast him with a uh, standard bolter round. Oh, that could actually, what? It could hit multiple targets? Faith without deeds is worthless. <laughs> That dealt nothing to him. Okay. Well, then I'm getting his run and gun. Which will then allow her to move a little closer. Guided by faith. She's just gonna run on in there, and then we can blast him here. So I I need to kill him. But he's not taking much damage from this. But As ah, the fuck it, you know. commands, I am. Nice shots. Very nice. Fantastically done. The weak. Okay, we're using Furious Reprisal, Recital, something idle. I don't know. Just. It's all gonna be fine. Can we switch to the other weapon set and then shoot again? No. Okay, good to know. Makes sense. I'd be surprised. What's uh, not. not reload, because that takes three action points. Never mind. Alright, and turn. So, uh, we gotta take this servitor down. So we're going to use on Analyze you. Enemy on the Servitor. I want to save two actions. No, we'll do Psychic Scream on the Servitor. Um, and then we can do Forewarning on Argenta. We'll do. Okay, we got two points left. So I'm going to do a Psychic Shriek on this jerk right here. He's still standing. That's concerning. Well... Hi. Oh, thank f fuck that dodge. Okay, so dodging out of an area actually makes you move. Good to know. Makes sense. Like, did you just shoot your friend? They're just... Eh, okay. Uh, not gonna hear me complaining about any of that. They just shot each other. That's... That's fine. I'm okay with that. Alright, uh, you get over here, actually. Just get right on in the thick of them. And then give him a good old cleave. I took care of this one. Yeah, that one you did take care of. That is for sure. And then you're gonna go charge over at that Victory one. Is imminent. Oh dust. my god, Abelard, you're awesome. And uh, I am going to do some. Oh, I can do it again. Oh, that's so cool. I won't stand. Oh, for I it. can't do it again. Target is too far. Target is too far. Okay, okay. You already have that. You have it as well. Uh, well, I, you know what? Screw it. I'm Don't moving up here. Don't let your guard down. Out there. Uh, let's hit him with some... Ah, uh, that's gonna... Okay, that, that'll hit him, but not Argenta. Perfect. We'll do it that way. You never did, Sean. Uh -huh. Yep, you didn't like that, did you? Okay. Uh, now I'll do forewarning on me? myself. And let's do voice of command on... It's as good as done. Did you run? Perfect. Okay. So, end turn. Argenta. If you would kindly shoot as him. As the Emperor commands, I act. God, it's got a lot of armor. <laughs> I'm assuming that's what's happening here. Yeah, it's got 80% armor, a combat servitor. It's just tough as nails. So, well, that's what we do. Oops. What I wanted to click. It's down to you. So we're gonna drop a. Uh, we can do an exposed weakness. So that's going to. Yeah, I'm gonna do it this way. So we're gonna. Was. Was that you? Analyze. Or... So that's plus three exploits. But then I'm going to use exposed weakness but on it, which is gonna decrease its armor. And then I'm gonna psychic shriek it. 
which is going to do more damage. It's still not going to kill it, but it's going to do a solid amount. Of Never mind, it's dead. Good job, Adira. That was, you know, looked dangerous, but we're okay. What have we here? More LAS pistols, a Grace of the Oblivious, gain plus five toughness if their intelligence is less than 35. That's hilarious. All right. Um, who has less than 35 intelligence? I'm guessing Sister Argenta has less than 35 intelligence. Yep. You were getting Grace of the Oblivious. <laughs> It just seemed like it. Um, oh, you also have less than 30 intelligence. Everyone's just 30 intelligence. Dead average. Dumb. I'm the only smart one here. All right, let's level up. Because we did that again. Another rank. Cool stuff. So, here we get uh, Finest Hour and an available talent. Ah, here's the fun thing. We get to pick, pick our talents. So, Finest Hour. The officer grants an ally an extra turn with full AP and MP. During the extra turn, there is no attack limit. Oh, my God. At this archetype rank, characters gain a special archetype ability that can be used as a heroic act or desperate measure. Ah, so now we get this. This must be our heroic act, finest hour. Uh, these abilities become available depending on the party's momentum value. If momentum reaches 175, the heroic act becomes available to the character. If momentum drops below 25, then it may be time to employ a desperate measure. That's a cool system, I gotta say. So, I, I think this is a... Uh, I mean, it doesn't say it is, but I wouldn't be surprised if it is a, uh, a finest hour type of thing. So, we now get to pick a talent, and there are a lot of talents. Bear with me. We're going to read through them. Not all of them. I'm just going to... Oh, my God. There are a lot. I don't know what kind of respecking there is in this game, so... There are officer-specific talents. There are... Oh, man... Like, I, I remember some of these from the original game. Oh, man. Can we get psychic powers? Yeah. Oh, we can get psi rating. Oh, we have to be level 10 to get psi rating 1. Wait, why the hell does Indira get psi rating 1? I don't have psi rating 1. But Indira does, but she's not level 10. Inscribed Soul... The Psyker gains the Inscribed Soul ability. It costs no AP, but deals direct damage to the Psyker equal to 25% of the Psyker's maximum wounds. Ow. The next Psychic power used after this ability will not trigger Psychic Phenomenon or Perils of the Warp and will not degrade the Veil. Interesting. Sacred Ritual. Psychic powers have a 25% chance to regain AP spent on Psychic powers when Veil Degradation is 10 or lower. Hmm. Still mine. The Psyker's Resolve is increased by Willpower Bonus divided by 2 while Veil Degradation is 10 or lower. What is Resolve? Resolve influences how efficiently and for long characters can fight in battle. It determines the amount of momentum gained at the beginning of each turn or after killing an enemy. Okay. It's a good way to stack momentum. If our Willpower is good. Right now our Willpower Bonus is plus 5, so that would be plus 2 Resolve. Does it say where our resolve is? This must be our resolve. Okay, so that that's a that's a solid bonus actually. It's fifty percent bonus. Ooh, fate bringer. I like this. Allies under the effect of at least one psychic power gain an additional five plus double my psychic rating, so zero percent armor penetration. Ooh, I'm gonna take fate bringer. It makes sense with the whole. It, it makes sense with the whole, like, diviner type of thing. Flawless plan? Uh, maybe I won't. Oh, God. There's so many cool abilities. Edge of Fate. At the beginning of every character's combat, the Psyker's allies gain 15% critical hit chance. The first critical hit removes this effect. Oh, that's also really cool. Flawless plan? Every ninth successful dodge and or parry by the Psyker. Okay, if you're wondering why it's ninth... Um, nine is the sacred number of the Chaos God Zinch, who is the god of fate, sorcery, mutation, and, uh, other things. It appears as a large bird-like entity, sometimes with two heads, though that is usually specifically one of Zinch's, uh, greater demon incarnation, the one known as, uh, Hyros Fate Weaver. Um, it's Zinch is cool. Uh, Zinch is very integrally connected to sorcery of all kinds. 
Um, so, yeah, th that's kind of cool, but the other ones are even cooler. The first dodge attempt of every enemy in combat suffers a minus seven, plus seven times the Psyker Sirening. So this is just minus seven. So, interesting. Seven is the sacred number of uh, Nurgle. I'm not sure why that would be connected. Oh, predicted downfall. I understand why that's connected to Nurgle. Nurgle is the chaos god of inevitability and entropy. Death. Decay. It's often associated as a god of disease. Most people tend to think of Nurgle as the plague god, and they're not wrong. He is the plague god, but it's just because plague is such a uh, powerful, I guess, symbol of entropy and inevitability. It is the thing that spreads death. <laughs> it is the thing that claims most people. Disease, ultimately, is the reason why most people die. Unnatural luck. When the Psyker uses a divination psychic power on an ally without an unnatural luck effect, that ally gains unnatural luck. Unnatural luck. When the ally suffers a critical hit, it becomes a normal hit instead of... Instead, an unnatural... God, these are really good. They're all so good. Uh, can I... Yeah, we can add them to favorites, so that will let me know. Oh, there's even more here. Second Sight. The Psyker Psychic Powers that have a range of two cells or more have their range increased by our Perception Bonus. Oh, that's also really cool. It's increased range. Uh, thus far, we haven't needed that. We'll, we'll see about that later. Psychic Barrage. We're not going to be doing that. Worst Reality. Uh, shit. It's... This is really cool. Faithbringer is really cool. Um, predicted Downfall is really cool. Unnatural Luck is also really cool. I, I'm going to... I'm going to star these right here and then I'm gonna look at more of them in my own time but I'm gonna take unnatural luck right now because it it, go, it connects with the voidborn um, idea of my character and I, I'm not going to be power gaming this uh, I'm going to be taking stuff that is thematic I will of course attempt to take things that are thematic and good for the characters but uh, this also makes sense. Like, we're a Voidborn. Voidborn have this sort of strange luck to their actions. So, I think this makes sense with us as a Diviner. Plus, it's it's good. It's going to be, like, super beneficial for our party's longevity if we can avoid critical hits. So, absolutely, this is what I'm taking. Um, complete. Unnatural luck and finest hour. Awesome. Abelard. So, we have a Daring Breach. The warrior immediately restores all AP and MP and gains plus agility bonus movement points until the end of the turn. So, they can move really far. They don't lose movement points after performing attacks. So, yeah, normally when you perform an attack, as we've seen, you can't move anymore. So, that's really cool. The warrior has no limit on melee weapon attacks this turn. God damn! Alright, so he's a melee character. We can get an epicenter of slaughter. Whenever the warrior is attacked, they gain plus one stack of epicenter of slaughter. <laughs> Just the name. <laughs> Until the start of the combat. At the start of their turn, the warrior gains one temporary wound for each stack. These temporary wounds cannot exceed the warrior's toughness bonus. Oh, that's... So every turn... That's just a passive. That is a way to not take damage. Fucking cool. Um, this guy's like a naval expert, though, so getting him some stuff like ramming speed increases the charge distance by three cells. We do have him use charge a lot, but I might not always have him be using charge, so we'll, we shall see. Blade Flurry. Each use of slash increases the damage dealt by slash by one until the end of combat. All right. Then we're kind of putting ourselves into the place where we're using slash a lot. I don't want to take one of the weapon experts until we have like a weapon that really fits the character. Dueling Mastery. This looks interesting. Plus 15% bonus to parry. It's very simple. And I he just kind of he looks like a duelist, you know? He's he's clearly of noble stock. Uh, you know, a man of culture. And customs, he's already got a 70% parry bonus, so dude's going to be an absolute, absolute unit at not getting shot, or not getting, uh, you know, hit in melee. So this is for deflecting melee attacks, dodge is for deflecting... 
That's dodge reduction. Uh, where's our dodge chance? Armor? Uh, this is a dodge chance. Helps negate damage from melee and range. So dodge is better than parry, to be sure. So what about nimble? That's 10% bonus to dodge. He doesn't look particularly nimble, though. So uh, let, me, let me star dueling mastery for him. And I definitely want to star epicenter of slaughter. I just don't think I'm going to take this right now because it's not as thematic for him. Um... God, there's, there's so many. Uh, <laughs> characteristic training, weapon skill. I mean, plus five weapon skill is always good. That's just flat stat bonus. Drukari weapon proficiency, Eldari weapon proficiency. Oh, I like where this is going. Using alien weapons? All right. All right. I'm okay with this. Yeah, dueling mastery. Uh, looks cool. What is breaking point? Uh, requires level 15. Not breaking point, then. Unlocking just random skills. Always nice. Stronger together. This stronger together. All allies excluding Xenos in the current... <laughs> Wait. Does this mean we get Xenos allies? Is that what you're saying here? That's cool. Uh, in the current party, gain plus five to the same characteristic as was chosen for Humanity's Finest. What is Humanity's Finest? Is that a thing that he has? I, I don't know if we have that right now. Better to die for the Emperor. While under... 40% wounds. Imperial World characters gain a 10% bonus to all characteristics and plus 2 to resolve. Are you an Imperial World character? I, I imagine that's probably why he has this ability. Get off me. Oh, man, I... I'm going to be boring. I, I am going to be boring, and we're just going to give him a weapon skill bonus. Plus 5 to his weapon skill. Very simple. Let's just get to it. Keep things simple for him. We'll worry about more stuff for that later. Okay. Idira here. Also a diviner, but we're going to spec her more for doing direct combat related things. So she also... Or she'll get dismantling attack. The operative immediately inflicts one exploit on all enemies in combat, then makes a free attack against the target. That attack always hits. Until the end of combat, the target of the attack suffers minus 30% penalty to dodge and minus 30% penalty to armor. That's really good. These abilities are all incredibly good. So, um, instant exposure. Exposed weakness costs zero AP. That sounds fun. Comprehensive analysis. If the target of analyzed enemies has two or more exploits, the target suffers one additional exploit. I love talents and stuff that make abilities that you have better in games. That's a type of granularity to, like, game design that is really cool, where, where your abilities can actually, like, change in their function, depending on what you have. That's not just based around your core stats, but rather, like, things that actually are specifically meant to work with those abilities. So that's cool. Um, I, and I, I don't know, instant exposure? I think I'm just gonna take it. I feel like we're gonna be using, um, the exposed weakness a lot anyways. It's it's this one. Removes all exploits from the target to decrease the target's dodge, parry, and armor. Although something that, yeah, maybe comprehensive analysis. I'll, I'll start this. Because this will allow us to like use that consistently on the same target to get additional benefit out of it. Maybe start as well. Let's inflict despair. When the operative hits an enemy that is affected by both an exploit and exposed weakness, that enemy loses 3 MP and their damage is reduced by 20% on their next turn. That's going to be really good for, like, bosses and that type of stuff. Passive learning. Oh. On their first turn of in combat, the operative randomly distributes the same number of exploits as when using analyze enemies among all enemies in a 10 cell radius around the operative. So this would involve her getting close. At the start of each of the operative's subsequent turns, they distribute half as many exploits of the base mount among all enemies in a 2 cell radius. Okay, so she would need to be a melee sucker. I'm not sure about that. That's really cool, though. Because that, that means, like, if you can buff up uh, the analyze enemies, this is going to be even better. All this is really cool. 
While the operative's perception bonus is 10 or higher, they gain plus one AP and ignore enemies' deflection. Uh, how the hell do you get your perception bonus to 10 or higher? Presumably with buffs of some kind. Reactive study. An enemy affected by an exploit within five cells from the operative attacks the operative or their ally. That enemy suffers plus one additional exploit. Okay. These are very circumstantial, but are very cool. Insightful precision. Precise attack. Okay, that's like, yeah, that's for using guns and stuff. Covert protocol. There's so many different things. My apologies, like, for going through this slowly. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I got to say about that. Psychic barrage. Which one was this again? Uh... Whenever the Psyker uses a damaging Psychic power on targets that are six cells or farther from the Psyker, the targets suffer an additional Ballistic skill bonus damage, so that's three. Eh, she's not really a Ballistic skill character. We could make her a Ballistic skill character. I, I do want her to be a Combat Psyker. Driving in Peril. Every Perils of the Warp increases momentum by the Psyker's Willpower bonus, plus Psy rating. Plus Resolve. Uh, we'd have to play her very risky we're constantly having her do perils of the warp to trigger a psychic phenomenon or perils of the warp for the first time each turn the psyker's next psychic power costs one less action point so she is I'm like 90% sure she is unsanctioned uh, judging by her attire and the fact that she has the heretic leaning but that, that's not necessarily the case um which means, like, Perils of the Warp is going to be kind of dangerous. The Power Conduit looks looks like it could be fun. I, you know what? I'm going to take Power Conduit. Because we have already triggered a Psychic Phenomenon, so that stuff, I think, happens quite frequently if you're actually actively using Psychic Powers. So, we'll just do it that way. We'll, we'll give that to her. Complete. And then lastly, Sister Argenta. What did she get? Firearm Mastery. The soldier gains the ability to make a number of extra attacks equal to their weapon's rate of fire, minimum of two, using the weapon's attack that normally costs the least AP, so the basic shot. These attacks do not spend AP. Oh, God. Uh, until the end of the soldier's turn, their first attack against each new enemy automatically scores a critical hit. Wow. The soldier immediately reloads their current weapon. What the fuck? Yeah, these, these, these abilities have to be heroic actions of some kind. They're, they are really good. Okay, so. She is going to be our, our, our gun character. Bolt weapon expert. I would say we're going to have her only use bolt weapons because she's sister of battle, but the sisters of battle are also like incredibly proficient in flame weapons and melta weapons. So I might want to give her one of those. They can also do close combat, but she's a she's a, a soldier, not a warrior. Warriors are close combat, soldiers are ranged combat. So I'm not sure if I'm going to give her a uh, a proficiency yet. But I would like to see what the like. Yeah, these are the ones we want to see. Litany of purifications. All enemies in the area effect of War Hymn of Furious Recital gain plus one stack of the disturbed effect. Enemies that are adjacent to the devotee gain plus two stacks of the disturbed effect instead. Also, all demons in the area suffer damage equal to the momentum restored to the devotee while using this ability. She would need to be a more of a close combat geared character. So if we like give her a flamethrower at some point, that would be really cool. What about Litany of Hatred? The devotee and their allies in the area of effect of Warhammer of the Furious Recital gain the devotee's willpower bonus, so that'd be three, divided by two, so one. Mm, not that good. Not right now. Shield of Faith. The devotee gains four times their willpower bonus, so that would be uh, 12% to armor against attacks of demons and warp damage. The devotee's resolve is also permanently increased by willpower bonus times 2. I'd like to increase your willpower then. That'd be cool. Not right now, though. Not right now. Let's let's get her some, some shooty stuff here. Like, um, enough bullets for everyone. Soldier second attack action in a turn it deals five plus double their agility. Oh, her agility is actually really good. I was not expecting her agility to be good. Percentage five plus two times her agility bonus, so ten. 
So 15% more damage to enemies that have not suffered damage from the soldier this turn. Okay, that's circumstantial. Could be good. Um, could be good, but could be less. I don't know. Um, kind of, what's muzzle velocity here? The first hit of each burst attack, so that's what we did before. It deals an additional damage equal to the weapon's current rate of fire. Okay. And point Or trace the trajectory. Whenever the soldier successfully dodges or uses cover against an enemy's attack, they gain a guaranteed critical hit against that enemy. That's cool. I, I think instead of going through all of this, I'm going to take the easy approach and just give her a ballistic skill advancement right now. Just flat base stats before we worry about complex abilities because I'm still learning. Just going to do the easy stuff first and from there we'll uh, get more complex stuff later down the line. So. That was leveling up. That only took a while. Uh... I hope you guys don't mind. <laughs> I'm going to take a look at these abilities in my own time and kind of map out what I'm going to do with all the characters. Rise to the top or get left in the dust. So that uh, this process won't go quite as long. What the actual ever-loving fuck is this lamp? I don't know. Okay, here's the bedchamber. There must be things to loot in the bedchamber. Surely she won't mind. I mean, she's dead, so she can't mind. Nothing here. Nothing, nothing. I always have a backup plan. And the, uh... So yeah, that's, uh... The rogue trader is dead. Uh, that's concerning. Now it's just between me and Ed Edelthrad. Well, these guys are dead. Heretics. Well, let's, uh... Keep your wits let's about get back you. to the bridge. So we can go back to the, um... Uh, Officer's quarters, was it? Where did we need to go? We need to go to the void ship bridge. Okay. So we're, we're sort of gated into certain areas at the moment. Oh, that loaded quickly. That's awfully nice of the game. Ah, this this doesn't look very good. Um, yeah, this, this looks bad. The first sacrifice opens the eye. The second sacrifice draws its gaze. His eyes appearing in the walls right there? Oh no, that's not a good sign. Edelprad, who's clutching a bleeding wound on his chest, gives you a tormented look. Help has arrived. Too late to change the tide, I'm afraid. What is there? But if there is any honor in you, we can at least die with dignity and give our lives for the rogue traitor. Theodora von Valancius is dead. I found her and the arch militant in her study. Edelthrad's eyes widen. God Emperor, preserve us. The rogue traitor is dead. The ship has lost her lord captain, and the house its head. Edelthrad shudders and grabs his shoulders. Shoulder. As you watch, the sleeve of his jacket bursts open, and two bone growths pierce through the fabric. No matter what ritual Conrad is performing there, the warp is too strong. I cannot withstand it. I feel my body changing with every second. The warp, ringing in the air. This is the end. We will perish in the warp, along with the warrant, and all the dynasty's ends. The enemy of humanity has triumphed. Idira looks anxiously at Edelfrad, then she glances back at you. I've seen it before. We'd... we'd better get away from him. The changes are already accelerating. Uh, the ship can still be steered out of the warp, and we must first restore communication between the bridge and the navigator's sanctum. Edelfrad stares at you, and his eyes harden with cold resolve once more. Then... We have no right to bow our heads. Alright, can we just shoot this guy? Ah, that symbol. Hmm. You see Conrad Voigtbeer clearly in the gloom of the bridge. The broken blade he is holding is stained with dark drops that seems to have a pearlescent glimmer to them. Hmm. I wonder if it's cherry juice. 
We are out of time! Edelthrad bites his knuckle, desperately thinking. You see a wave ripple across the whites of Edelthrad's eyes, and they begin to turn a sickly yellow. Draw your weapon. Voigtbeer, you duplicitous cur! The rogue traitor's death will be avenged! What? Theodora is dead? Voigtbeer stares at you in seemingly genuine bewilderment. No, that can't be. Not now, I still haven't... Uh, this is interesting. Edelthrad lowers his head, then he sighs and locks eyes with you, his gaze cold, haughty, and fanatical. The ritual will not be completed. I'll take care of it, and you see to it that the void ship breaks free from the warp. Watch over our realm. Farewell. All right, so he's going to go out in a uh, in a blaze of glory. Edelthrad, don't. Your ritual won't be finished, heretic. I think he just finished the ritual. Nope, running away, are you? I think he's going full. Uh, oh yeah, that's demon host. Chaos spawn. Wait, who turned into a chaos spawn? With fire and vigor, our emperor imbue us. Ah, fuck sticks. Uh, to use the abilities called heroic action, desperate measures, momentum is required. Depending on the actions of your party in combat, their momentum bar will increase or decrease. A high momentum value allows your character. Yeah, we know this already. Cool. Um, the rest will learn as we go. Okay, so fucking. Who, who turned? Was this Voigtbeer or Edelthrad? I think it was Edelthrad. Edelthrad. He stepped into the circle like a noob and turned into a chaos spawn. Nice. Well done. Uh, Alright, how do we do this? Let's not get near that, because that's going to be bad. So, let's let's stay here. I'm fine with her staying right where she is. Adelard? Adelard? God, I'll, I'll pick up position next to Cyrene here. Idira? Stay on this flank. And Sister Argenta, go stay on that flank. Actually, Sister Argenta, you take up position next to me. That way you can shoot me in the head if I turn into a demon. Alright, so that's a chaos spawn. Uh, chaos spawns are what happens when somebody gets completely overwhelmed by chaos and they don't have the power to resist or maintain any semblance of their humanity anymore. They just sort of devolve into expressions of rampant mutation. Now, games never quite do chaos spawns justice with their appearance, which is a shame. I mean, this this looks good, for sure, but they are in a constant state of change and mutation. Meaning they are regrowing and growing and altering. They're horrifying to behold. So, I was expecting him to turn into a demon host, which arguably would be worse, because then he's still somewhat in control and still has access to his humanity. Okay, we've already seen this, so I don't need to look at this again. Alright, the things to be done. What's our momentum? We're at 184 momentum. Does this cost momentum? Bring it down? I guess not. But this is finest hour. Let's... Do we want to use it now? Maybe. Use it on Argenta. Let's, let's do it. Let's Here's test it out. my perfect moment. It's Argenta's perfect moment, actually. So Argenta is now going to... Blow the fuck out of this thing. <laughs> or not. We can shoot it. Like, how much... If she advances, she can shoot it more. But if she advances, she's going to get shot a lot. Whereas if we do the, the bolter, it's only, that's a 58% chance to hit and a 28% chance to hit that guy. I'll Let's do, do that. Nice. Okay. Well, he died. Threat. And then you can do it... Again. <laughs> it's only 25% chance to hit there, though. So maybe we just use the regular one? Ah, yeah. It's got, like, a blast back behind it. That's really cool. Bolters are fucking cool as shit. Is worthless. Nice miss. It's not a nice miss, actually. As the Emperor commands, I act. What I should have done, so this is a learning experience, is, uh... 
used my buffs on her and then given her that. So I still have more stuff available. That only used some of my momentum, so we're still looking okay here. I am going to cast full warning on Abelard. I'll make it happen. And then I'm going to cast Voice of Command on Avalar. I'll see to it personally. Okay. This is affecting our Veil Degradation here. And then I can shoot Lightning at this thing. Do it. Screw the Veil. Nice. Okay, we're getting... We're getting there. We're getting a little sketchy. Alright, Crew Officer's gonna... Gonna shoot. Or, or not. Oh! Okay, we do have some allies here. So as it turns out, nice shot. You weren't even like aiming anywhere near him, bro. Okay, so we definitely want to use analyze enemies on the spawn. Why can I not use it on the spawn? We're not in range. What's the range on it? In twenty cell radius, we can absolutely not the scryers, George. No line of sight. Ah, I see. I think she should have line of sight. Like, you can see it. Come on. All right. Apparently we can't. Apparently we don't have line of sight to it. I call bullshit. Uh, we're going to move her back here then. This is a little risky. But, no, not full warning. Other one. I'm going to drop a... Uh, analyze right here. So, this thing has how many exploits on it? Three, I think. That's what that is right up there, indeed. So, three exploits. This... Removes all exploits and reduces its dodge, parry, and armor. Okay. Um, or we can just psychic scream it and do a full warning on somebody. We'll do a full warning on our Anything Genta here. And that does affect veil degradation. Good to know. Psychic scream. This is probably going to trigger a perils, isn't it? What? Guess we'll see. Was that you? <laughs> Perils of the warp never killed no one. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, right, when psychers reach deeper into the warp to power their abilities, there is always a chance of the Empyrean bleeding into our reality. A factor that can be invariably destructive and damaging. At the beginning of combat, veil degradation starts at zero. Veil degradation increases by one for each minor psychic power, and three for each major psychic power. Okay. That's fine. And momentum is a party based thing, as it turns out. So. One character using their momentum-based ability is uh, the entire party using it. Alright, Argenta can go again. Ah, this psychic phenomenon happening. Good stuff. Go. Yeah. I mean, shoot the chaos spawn, right? Or we could not shoot the chaos spawn, that's cool too. Doubt is the weak. Argenta, please. Thank you. Uh, oh, good. So, when it got down to a certain health, it, its exploits are gone. Now it has an energy boost. Creature's movement points and damage are increased by four for every devoured ally. Ah, so we want to kill its allies? Good to know. Now we know that. <laughs> uh, fucking great. In turn. Oh, hi. Not okay. Ooh. Ooh. I am prone and down and not having a great time. Okay, so... Yeah, we gotta kill all the, the heretics. But I need to distract this thing. And Abelard's the guy. So we're gonna go right here. Can we taunt it? No, right? Uh, I don't think we can taunt it. I would like to taunt it. Endure. Brace for impact. I'm gonna do brace for impact. And then I'm gonna do endure. Okay. Hopefully that's gonna draw this thing's attention, and then we're gonna give it a good old whack. Because somebody's got a fucking. Okay, it didn't care. Didn't, didn't care in the slightest. Okay. Well, I'm still learning. It's been a little while. To the 
Yeah, good. Nice shot. Nice shot. Almost. Oh, did kill him. So we deal. That's a dead guy. Hey. Our chumps are actually doing something. Get him. That's not getting him. Heretics. Nice. Heretics can't aim. Never mind. I spoke too soon. That guy just straight up disappeared from reality. So if I walk out of here, I'm taking an attack opportunity, right? It, it doesn't specifically say that I will. Um, but of course. But it, it kind of looks that way. Okay, we got like veil degradation going around everywhere. We can analyze the enemy again. Now that it's in close combat. And I think I want to uh, expose its weakness here. Okay. Got one action point left. I think I'm going to hit it with a stick. That was actually kind of effective. Who would have thought? Hitting things with sticks. Actually, a solid plan. So, Argenta... Somebody's got to go deal with these Rejoice goddamn heretics. And she can presumably take the... I may be down. Oh, shit. So, it's attack of opportunity. Hit everyone. Oh my god. Uh, god. Um. So I, I'm, I'm down. I am, I am out of this fight. We may die here, guys. This may be it. So can I leave? Can I, can I go get these jerks down here so that this spawn doesn't devour more? Hey, I'm gonna do it. No, apparently I'm not. It has just an ungodly amount of opportunity attacks, and now I have no more movement because overexerted. No, it's not because of that. I, I, I don't know what to what to make of this. Um, can I just shoot one of them? All I have is burst fire, and it's not gonna be in range. What about charge? Can I charge over that way? Can't get to him. Can't move farther. I'm out of uh, movement points. Well then, I guess I have to charge the chaos spawn. Target is too close. So I just put myself into a position where I can't shoot this thing without hitting allies. I can't shoot enemies. And I can't do anything. Because the, the last pistol does not have a basic melee attack. I can't get to... Uh... That's not the Seneschal's job. Man, this is bad. I'm gonna endure, I guess. Okay. I mean, at least our chumps are doing something. But this is what I'm concerned about, is all these guys here are gonna, like, absorb health. Sort of thing. Hopefully Abelard can get to them next turn. Idira should not walk away. This doesn't seem very wise. Uh, this is a minor psychic power. All of these, these are not psychic powers, so I'm going to use Analyze Enemy on it again. Anything else? Get it some exploits. I don't know if... Uh, oh, exploit! Or expose weakness. But of course. Only lasts one turn. Okay. This is where we are now in the initiative order, and then it's an Overseer, then a Deck Enforcer. No, we're at the bottom right here. Okay. I wish it showed, like, a, an icon for all the different things. So that's a bit confusing. I mean, unless I can warp lightning from this distance, which I can't, I, my option is to hit it with a stick. Also, I don't have the actual ones to do warp lightning, so... Uh, that's that, I guess. Do I do forewarning? I'm gonna forewarning Argenta. She's already been forewarned, so I guess that refreshes. Okay, here comes the cutthroats. They're shooting the Abelard. It's okay. Uh, we have a med kit. I want to use it on her. Can't. Wounds requirements not met. Stores. Okay, I, I'm not sure what that means. Well, I guess we're in melee now. 
I'm gonna furious recital. Blessed be the hand of the healer. Yeah. So now we can walk back. Or somewhere. Man, we are blocked. This guy absolutely fucked us because I can't get to them. There's nothing I can do about them. I'm gonna walk away and trigger an attack of opportunity. Jesus Christ, that damage. I I'm doing it. Damage, just devoured him. More rending scream. And that just ends our turn when it does that. No, it doesn't. It just... I have two action points left and can't do anything else. No, I can still do stuff. Never mind. As the Emperor commands, I am. Okay. I can't by chance shoot him, can I? No. And I can't jump down there either. Fuck. I got two action points. Can I blast these without doing huge friendly fire? No. I'll do it. Well, at least we're doing damage. She gets two more action points. Faith Still two more. They're free, right? When does it end? Okay. Just oh, God. A no, it's not just a minor setback. Everyone's down. How do I get them back up? This I, can't is unacceptable. I can't shoot anymore. I will not. Okay, she's out of action points. To do basically anything. And turn. Oh, God. He's down. I'm down. Oh, we're gonna lose. You may be wondering, like, I thought you were good at Rogue Trader. This is quite different from the actual uh, tabletop RPG. There are a lot of things that are uh, unique here. So, bear with me as we die. Um, <laughs> we'll do. Like, Adira has done some pretty good damage to this, this goddamn thing. Forewarning myself On again. I, I don't want to get hit at all. Expose weakness. What of course. Do it. And then hit it. Hit it with what? the stick. Because now it's not gonna be regaining health. The the problem is is I can't help anyone, it would seem. Like if I could get a character to stand up. Fury. I still cannot. I refuse. This requirement is not met. I don't know. Contains various cataplasm patches, antiseptics, and synthetic skin applicators. Restores 6 plus Medicaid divided by 5 wounds. Also removes bleeding, removes one injury, or if none exists, attempt to remove old wounds. See, I, I don't know... ...what the problem is. I really don't. It just says wounds requirement not spirit. met, but there, I don't know what the wounds requirement is. Am I just too wounded? Is my character too wounded to be affected by Medicaid? That might be the case. Maybe you have to wound them before they go down. The enemy, In which case, the there, there was nothing I could really do. Well, let's just shoot it. Hopefully it'll stop devouring people. I refuse. Can't shoot it again. So uh, it's only once. I guess we'll do run and gun, and then I'll just shoot it. Just doing this. Hey, you know, it hit. We gotta get all the damage in that we can. I will not. Okay. Stop it! From the ashes, I will rise. Okay, I, I should heal her. I should be healing up the characters. Yeah that uh, are not dead yet. All right, what are you doing? Are you actually shooting at me? Damn, that guy's doing pretty good. I don't want him to friendly fire me though, so that would be great. Um, okay, so her her normal course of action, I am concerned that she's going to die, so I'm not gonna use forewarning, because if she gets like a Perils of the Warp, that's uh, probably gonna be GG. So drop, analyze enemies. And uh, do I expose weakness again? I just want to see what the exploit does. 
fix plus one stack of exploit. If the operative hits the target with a exploit stack, the attack deals five or five times perception bonus percent more damage. So that's going to be uh, her perception bonus is I think five four. No, it is five. Be twenty five percent more damage just by base doing a basic attack. Anything else? I guess we do it. Then I can do the exploit weakness. No, it doesn't have it anymore. Ten, I mean, it, it, it'll... I'm not so no sure. exploits. Okay. I'm gonna end turn. I can't move. It's gonna trigger an attack of opportunity. She's gonna go? Okay, we gotta heal... Uh, I can heal myself at the very least. I'm gonna do it. Okay. That was pretty clutch. Shoot it. Very low chance of hitting. Very high chance of hitting Alice. <laughs> Not ideal. I'll do it. Oh man, Argenta. Argenta. That is not the Emperor's wish. Okay. She's down. More rending scream. Did she devour it? This thing is horrible. That the, the guardsman's doing more than we are. That, that, this crew officer is not. We're standing in Toxin. We need to move away, but I can't. There's, there's nothing I can do. 58% chance. Just blast it full automatic. Is that what we're doing? Then we're gonna run and gun afterwards? Screw it. You know, it's some damage. Give her the run and gun. Shoot it again. I'll do it. Maybe we can kill it. I yeah, this was not this is a learning experience, so uh You're gonna have to watch us die every now and then. Especially since we're not playing this game on like super easy difficulty. Yeah. So for I am his chosen. Load last saved. Let's give that another try. That was uh that was horrible. <laughs> And so yeah, med kits can't be used against characters that are downed. We know that now. Got to use them while they're still standing. So we'll have to be uh, mindful of that. And Chaos Spawn has some gnarly ass AOE, and we want to kill the uh, the heretics first. So if the heretics die, more guardsmen are going to be active for the fight. So. Oh, we're already in the fight. I can't move further. Oh, no. Okay, well. Um, I wish you could vault over stuff and jump down. Because I am pretty screwed here. We're moving back. Because we don't have to worry about getting shot. So cover is actually not beneficial to us. I'm not going to use bring it down just yet. I will use Voice of Who Command on Argenta. Me. We already have Veil Degradation. Normally combat would start off with zero Veil Degradation, but it does say usually starts at zero Veil Degradation. And we have a very, very compelling reason as to why there would be Veil Degradation at the start of this combat, because this motherfucker just erupted through the Veil. So, uh, yeah, sensible that it's here right now. Uh, not nice for us, but, you know, what can you do? Out of range there. We could hit it with uh, our lightning here, but I'm not gonna. I'm going to use... Maybe I should move Let's a little make bit. Some opportunities. Perhaps I can hit it at a better angle right here to hit those enemies there. Yeah, that's... That seems doable. But then I should do forewarning first. Question is, who's it gonna attack? Abelard? I I'll think it's gonna... It we're gonna... Let's have it attack Abelard. We're gonna put Abelard into the line of fire. So, now I'm going to blast it with uh, Warp Lightning. Okay. So, we're going to hold our position there. Could use this, but I'm not going to. Not at the moment. He missed. These guys are going into combat, but hopefully, the fact that they're damaged means they can get picked off. This guy was an absolute chad, so this deck enforcer, hopefully he's going to be able to kill all these guys again. Not looking great for him, though, to be fair. Okay, good job, crew officer. All right, Idira. 
you are going to take up position right here. You got some range, so we can definitely use an analyze enemy on this. On and then I would like you to expose Anything else? its weaknesses. You got two points left. We could blast it with warp lightning as well, but now is not the time. I need to kill the other dudes. God, I can't hit them from here. Maybe from here? This is risky to move there. Oh, I should have uh, not double-clicked it, so that way we would have... Uh... Okay. Um, he's got forewarning. I, I don't want to use the, the warp lightning. I'm switching to the pistol. We can just blast it with the last pistol. Good shots. Good shots. Very nicely done. It was roughly the size of a barn door. And, uh... You missed both of them. It's okay. I forgive you. Don't kill Deck Enforcer. He's too cool to die. This is going worse than, than last time. Okay. Argenta. So we can pull up to here. I'm gonna do it. This is risky, but I'm hoping Abelard can engage it. And then we can lay down some serious Daka with a 0% hit chance on these guys down here. Or we just shoot them normally. 95% hit chance. That seems a bit better to me. As the so, uh... See ya later, bitch. And, uh, then we can run and gun. And hopefully just not get tagged by the chaos spawn. Very good. Now can I blast these jerks? 33 and 22. Man. So that's 95... Yeah, we're, we're, we're killing him. Good. Another one dead. Okay. Uh, Alright. How's that? We're, we're done here. Furious recital. I'm gonna hold off on that. Oh, it moves first. What's it doing? Okay. She's taking a bit of damage, but she has a med kit. She can heal herself. Abelard? We could go over there to kill off those guys. To be sure. So I'm going to move up to here. Because she's drawn its attention now. The target is too far. Oh, man. Indeed. You're not. One fewer target. Yep, one fewer target indeed. He is dead. Very good. Um, last pistol, because we can't move any further unless we use Daring Breach. I don't know if I want to use Daring Breach right now, though. Because we're not in a position where we really need to use it. So I think I'm just going to last pistol. Victory is okay. That hit. Would like to do a bit more damage. Should I brace for impact now? Can only be used once per combat. No, I'm going to wait. Shouldn't be blowing that early. Okay. Nice. Very nice. Okay, come on, Deck Enforcer. You're an absolute unit. Oh, yeah. Here he goes. He's on a roll. Okay. This guy is less of a unit, but we know that already. Okay, so I'm gonna pull Taking up to here. Taking calculated risk is my second nature. We are going to forewarn Argenta, and then we're going to voice of command Argenta. Can't. Then we're gonna voice of command Abelard. Can't. Okay. Then we're gonna voice of command Zira. Okay. And then I'm not gonna force lightning that thing because that'll hit Argenta. We're gonna switch to our. Uh, a pistol, and I could do two shots here, 69%. I mean, I can't not take the 69%. It's just, like, legally, I'm, I'm not allowed to not make this shot. All right, well, we're doing it. It's a hit. Good job. Well done. Okay, crew officer, can you get out there and... These crew officers are uh, not earning their stripes. I just want to point that out. Analyze it. We'll do. Yeah, just leave the analysis on it. And then move over there. So I want to kill these fucking jerks. Uh, can we psychic scream him? Yes, we can. That is a major psychic power, though. And Abelard is there. So we can also psychic scream this Anything guy, because there's no one nearby. So, he's, uh, he's gonna, uh, have his brain explode. What an unfortunate turn of events, indeed. Uh, do we want to forewarn? I'm gonna forewarn Argenta. It's not doing anything. She, is she already forewarned? She's already forewarned. It's permanent. Until the end of combat. Oh, I didn't read that. Well, well look at me learning things. Every battle. 
cool, so I don't need to keep recasting that on people. All I'm doing is increasing our veil degradation. Maybe I want to increase our veil degradation. You know what? I don't like the veil. The veil is dumb. Well, that guy missed. Point blank. No, no, no. What are you doing? Okay, good. Yeah, hit them. Ah, man. I couldn't even do anything with her. She was just completely screwed. Don't you dare leave us now. My place is at the fall. Yeah, kill him. I took care of this. You sure did. Darren no, Breach. I wish we could get into melee, but we can get up here and charge. So, we're doing it. We're going in. There's no enemies left for him to devour. It's just... It's just us and the chaos spawn. I will do my duty. Ten damage. Endure. Oh, we can attack again. Oh, God. Do I attack or... De I, I defend. It's gonna attack us next turn. I can still attack it again, because it's free. Point. That's a dodge. That is not ideal. I'm not interested. Alright, well, come on, Abelard. Down to you. If you can tank the Chaos Spawn for us while everybody else misses, please hit it. Come on, deck off. Deck Enforcer. No, Deck Enforcer. Oh, yeah, Deck Enforcer. De there you go. Alright, Overseer. That was your moment of glory, and you failed. Uh, forewarning, do you already have it? You already have it. He does. Okay. We don't need to cast it on him again. What I will cast is Voice of Command. I'll see and you it here we go. We're going in. I'll make it happen. It's time. It's his turn again. Are we going to do Endure a second time? Does it stack? I don't know if it stacks. I, it, it probably doesn't. Can I click on... We look here. Endure will remain for one round. I don't think this is going to... End... Indeed. I really hope not. Otherwise, that ability is not Victory. so good. I'm just going to do it again, just to be sure. And then we'll, uh... See here. That's his turn over. I'd rather not. Okay, you still have some more actions. You could shoot it with the revolver. I, I think I'm going to move just a little. I am ready for whatever comes. I, I hope you are. We're gonna shoot it. 25% chance. Not the best shot ever, but it's a deck. God damn it, guys. You're the worst. Literally the worst. Psychic Scream? Uh, no, analyze it more. We'll do. Got seven stacks. Now we can expose weakness. And now I'm gonna Psychic Scream it. Six to 14 damage, or we can switch to our other weapon. What would this do? 13 to 13. This is likely going to do more damage. But Psychic Scream does... No, it doesn't do anything else. Just targets one target. Ah, this will friendly fire. We don't want that. Psychic Scream? We'll do. Only seven. Not ideal. At least its weakness is exposed for one round. Ah, this... I don't think it's actually good, because that's not going to last long. Or does it last until... Nice, he fucking parried it. Appelard, you absolute Chad. Look at this motherfucker. First things first. We endure. Always endure. Oh, yeah. Lay into him. Hell yeah, brother. Too close. Can't charge. That's uh, that's fine. I don't think there's much else we can do here. Don't want to use Daring Breach. Rather save my... Uh, um, heroic act for uh, Cyrene to use. Come on, crew officer. These guys suck. Whereas Deck Enforcer here. Okay. okay, a little bit of friendly fire from Deck Enforcer here. I'm not a big fan of that. <laughs> but I understand. We can use Bring It Down. We can use Finest Hour. We can use Voice of Command. Can he, he can't get Voice of Command. He's already got Voice of Command. Let's, we can use Voice of Command on Deck Enforcer. We can't. Um, can I use voice of command on myself? No, but we can use it on crew officer. But he's gonna die because he's standing in acid like an absolute nub. Uh, so we're not gonna bother with him. Um, bring it down? I mean... 
my gut oh, I can't use it. It's a bad idea. We could use it on him. Can't use it on myself. We could use it on him, but he'll just die. And he doesn't do anything anyways. Can we use finest hour on him again? Oh yeah. Accept your lot. Endure again. And start laying into this fucking thing. Ah, oh, 13 damage. 14 damage, dude. Abelard. Victory is it? With this, with this chain sword. Someone else can do this. Oh yeah. All right, we're here again. He's still forewarned. He's got all the things. I really wish I could use bring it down on somebody. I can move. If I move there, we're gonna get AoE. So I, I would like to give it to Deck Enforcer. Do I just use it on regular I'll crew officer? I'm use it on regular crew officer. Regular crew officer, you have disappointed me yet again. Well, I guess we shoot the chaos spawn. We have a 30% chance of hitting. I'm gonna move a little closer. I'm gonna regret it, but I'm gonna move a bit closer. 60% chance, that's better. And damage, every bit of damage helps. Uh, I'm gonna forewarn myself. Now I'm close by and I don't wanna die. Ooh, this is intense. Next up is... Off of the line. Uh, no, Idira. I'm just a bit confused. Okay, you get out of the way of Deck Enforcer. Deck Enforcer needs to have all the stuff he can possibly do. Expose its weakness. Was that you? Or... Psychic Scream? 10 to 24? Do it. All damage. It's okay. It's all right. I'll take it. That is not my destiny. Can't do that, Star Fox. Okay, okay. Who's up next? Me? No, I think it it, it chunks down like that. So chaos spawn is next. Oh God. I, okay, I understand how the initiative thing works. It rending screamed, and it's gonna it's gonna attack Abelard who parried and dodged. Fucking Abelard. Absolute unit. Abelard the Spawn Slayer. He basically did, like, almost all of the damage to that thing. That was a cool ass fight. Let's do some looting. Goods. Blade Shard. Blade made from a mysterious metal. It's got faces in it. That shimmers with unnatural colors. We have some gloves of endurance. Whenever the wearer of these gloves gets an injury or falls unconscious, their allies gain plus one to bonus to damage. That's cool. Mantle of heroism requires iconoclast followers. So that's me or Abelard. Each heroic act used in battle increases the wearer's dodge by 20%. We're giving that to Abelard. He, he gets it. I mean, he... he. How fucking heroic was he? He's getting, he's getting all that. All right. Uh, Abelard, my dude, you need a cape. Please tell me it actually shows up. Oh, yeah. It's not red. It's a bit unfortunate, but I'll take it. The gloves of endurance we're going to give to somebody who's more likely to die. I mean, that would be him. He's going to be in close combat. He's our tank. Um, who's most likely to die? Let's be real. It's probably me. <laughs> but Argenta, maybe? I, I don't know. She's probably getting shot a lot. Who's taking the Gloves of Endurance? Dira? Dira might die. Any Anyone could die. Let's just give it to Argenta here. Now she's got some, some gloves. Okay. Yeah, I mean... Pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, we're gonna give her a sword instead of an axe. Makes more sense for a sister of battle. They're not really axe wielders. That was a cool fight. Hard. For an opening boss battle. I always keep my options open. And, uh, you know, we did die. Deck Enforcer, you were, uh, pretty, pretty cool. The Emperor protects. Yes, he does. Today he does, anyways. Not always. Let's, let's be real. The Emperor does not always protect, but... Bridge Officer... Always keep your eye on the prize. He's gonna probably get demoted. Who, who's this? Is that... No. What do we do here? Let me uh, use this thing. 
Talk to the bridge officer? What about up here? That's the command throne. Oh man, it looks so cool. Raver! Master Helmsman! System status report! Oh, he's another guy. Party member? Master Helmsman Ravor. By the Emperor, it's the Seneschal, living and breathing. The white-haired man with sickly pale skin salutes you. Well, there's a tricky question. The whole place is so overgrown with foul wickedry, we'd be scrubbing it off the vid screens for throne knows how long. How did you people survive in here? The man glances around the bridge. Must have been Providence. It better have been the Emperor's, not someone else's. When they barged in here, the ones with the Master of Whispers, some officers charged them, but it wasn't even a fight. I grabbed whoever I could and dragged them behind the cogitators. Then I prayed for our rescue. We need to re-establish contact with the Navigator's Sanctum. It is our only chance of escaping the warp. Your words seem to knock the officers out of their stupor, and the air around you fills with voices and commands being issued. You hear someone sobbing, one of the survivors buckling under the stress. Avalard cuffs the crying officer without even looking. Man, Avalard, Avalard's the dude. And look at that, we're already asserting our authority. People are jumping into motion with our words. We, we have everything that it takes to be a rogue trader. Certainly not Edelthrad, who became a chaos spawn. Restore the Vox channel with the Navigator's Sanctum. Ready the crew. Prepare for translation to real space. Abelard pauses for a few seconds before turning to you. Cyrene von Valancius, you may call me superstitious, but translation is not a good time to disregard rules. You are the only one who speaks for House von Valancius. You may not be the Lord Captain, but you, more than anyone else here, deserve to take her place in the ritual that is about to commence. He directs your attention upward to the throne that sits at the apex of the tall staircase. I am ready. Begin the ritual. Hell yeah. Let's go. I I'm not going to ask what must I do. I, 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 I kind of want to know, but I'm not going to do that. The crew are watching. <laughs> I'm just going to pretend like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's like that song, you know. What's that thing spinning? Somebody should stop it. Theodora. Um, shut up. You're dead. The image before you is hazy, swaying in sorcerous currents, invisible to mortal eyes, as if whatever is beneath this thin shell is constantly changing while still remaining the same. It is taken on the guise of Theodora, but the false rogue trader's eyes reveal the entity's true, surreal nature. One of Theodora's eyes is engulfed in otherworldly fire. The other, a vessel of ancient evil, bores into you. The voice seeps directly into your brain without ever reaching your ears, and this voice booms with all the horrors of the warp. Who are you to oppose destiny itself for the sake of the lives that are not your own? Though many threads stretch between you and the other creatures of your world, pitiful, worthless links, ready to shatter at the slightest touch, a muddled, erratic, pointless tangle, I'm getting some um, Naraka from the, the Piranesi, if you have uh, played the game Ixion vibes from Theodora here. Never a bad thing. It resonates and merges with the voices that have already dug their foul roots into your consciousness. A moment, you, a moment later, you realize that all these voices are the myriad manifestations of the same call that has finally invaded your mind. You, you are to blame for Theodora's death. The vision lets out a cawing laugh. Cawing. This is Zinch. I mean, we saw a Zinch symbol on the ground in front of, uh, uh, the Voidfear's ritual. I am the beginning and the end, and all that courses in between. I am the voice of the truth that is destined to triumph, for this triumph is the terminal point for every twisted maze of fate. Oh yeah, this is 100% Zinch. Your head begins to spin, and viscous drops slither down your cheeks. You blink, and you are no longer looking at Theodora. It is the traitor Voidfear, just as fluid and ephemeral as the previous apparition. The same terrifying voice seethes from his lips. The aspirant vowed to return with a trophy, a relic that could serve the edge of daybreak. That fate was assured, and the steps chosen, and yet... You broke the unbreakable when you took the Aspirant's place. I see you on the day when the final dawn rises over the Iron World. I see you by my side on that day, the day of my resurrection. Hmm. 
The image is scattered by invisible sorcerous winds, and you see Adira, her eyes aglow with the same sinister flame. Your image is woven into the tapestry of things to come. I am the will of the Weaver of Destinies, and today I will weave a new thread of elusive possibilities and fickle chances. The thread that will lead you out of the maw of irreversibility. The thread that will help you find the keys to salvation. The thread that will guide you and the weapon of our return to me. Our return. A cavalcade of hazy glimpses of a future yet unknown passes before your eyes. A flash of crimson, purple. The images replace one another in a violent kaleidoscope without ever letting you get a proper look at them. Through the rippling mirage, you see a twisted image of Abelard, the loyal seneschal of the dynasty. The path is set, child of dawn. The thread is woven. Follow it, servant of mine. Um, can I say no? Master Helmsman Ravor. Ravor turns around and looks up at you. He hesitates for a few moments, then addresses Abelard, who is standing next to you. Seneschal, the Navigator's Sanctum is silent. The Vox signal is stable, which means... Abelard nods absentmindedly. The Navigator gave his life battling the storm that nearly claimed the Von Valencia's flagship. We will honor his memory along with all who died this day. Ravor does not look away. He is giving you a hard stare, his white brow furrowed. Seneschal, will you tell us now? Who is that? Where's the Lord Captain? As First it Officer, it is my duty to inform you with the greatest regret and indelible sorrow that Lord Captain Theodora von Falatius is dead. May her memory never fade from the annals of the dynasty. So, it, it didn't read out the little uh, bit of text here. It takes time for Abelard to respond. He watches, he grits his teeth, unable to bring himself to say anything. Finally, he adjusts his bloodstained coat, straightens, and begins to speak. I feel like that's that's important stuff. And in, in case you guys are just listening, uh, I know some people probably just listen to, uh, you know, the videos. Even though there's cool stuff, visual stuff happening, you know, it's cooler to watch. But I understand. We all like the multitask. Um, that's... It's an important gesture. You know, he's like, he's mustering his own courage to face what just happened. And... Let's see what he says next. By right of blood succession, and with the absence of other kin who could challenge this decision. No, I'm not going to refuse. I'm just going to say nothing. It is hereby declared that the successor to Theodora von Valencius is her heir, the rightful inheritor of the Warrant of Trade, and the title of Rogue Trader. The official ascension ceremony will be held at a later time. In the interim... Uh, have you lost your tongues? Hail your lady! It is because of her toils that we all still live! <laughs> the deed is done, mistress. Uh, my apologies. I meant to say... Lord, Captain. The Seneschal turns to you. He looks at least a half decade older. <laughs> oh man, this, this poor guy, he's had a rough day. But he, uh, you know, in the darkest hour, the light shines the brightest. And it certainly did for him. End dialogue. By the right of blood. We've got some repairing to do. The treachery of the Master of Whispers was fruitless. But victory came at a great cost. Lord Captain Theodora von Valencius perished along with her heir, Edelthrad, and thousands of crew members. Yet hope remained, for the second in line to the rogue trader dynasty survived. And through the strength of her resolve, saved those who were counting on her for protection. Cool art, by the way. Man. 
Uh, really awesome. So unless there's another cutscene, uh, this is where I'm going to call the episode. So that seems like it's the end of the intro, and now we are officially in our place as a rogue trader. I am stoked for this game. It looks awesome. The storytelling is really good. I love the setting. I, I had some struggles with some of Alcat's other games because I'm, I'm just not the biggest fan of the Pathfinder setting. Um... But I don't have that issue with Warhammer 40k. Okay, it looks like there is going to be a bit of uh, more dialogue and cutscene type of stuff. So we'll finish that up, then end the episode. Deep shadows of weariness can be seen on Abelard's face. Though the old officer's eyes are keen, they rake over you from head to toe. He frowns, mutters something, then nods to himself. Very well, your ladyship. You cannot help but notice that the Seneschal does not know how to talk to you or where to begin. His hesitation brings an involuntary smirk to your face, as though someone else entirely is gloating at the old officer's confusion. Seeing your smile, Abelard pulls himself together. Why would we smirk at that? That's not good. I, I, I feel like we're possessed. You must now hold your first officer's briefing in your new role as Lord Captain. For many of those who are about to join us on the bridge, this will also be their first briefing. We sustained massive losses among the senior and middle-ranking officers. Some posts have had to be filled by the deputy's deputy's deputy, while others go unfil unfilled entirely. And now the deck clans are deciding who will take over the leaderless crews. <laughs> I love it. Deck clans. So, these ships are massive, right? They're basically floating cities. People are born and die aboard these void ships, never seeing, never setting foot on a planet. There are cultures aboard every single ship. Not, not bacteria cultures, but like, literally like, the gun crew will be its own culture. And the engineering crew will be its own culture. It, it is wild. <laughs> They'll have their own customs, their own like, way of dressing. It, it's, it's so cool. Um, how did we come to lose so many officers. I, I think we know the answer to that question. What is on the agenda for this meeting? We will ask that. Sure. You misspoke, surely. I am the Lady Captain, am I not? I'm not going to be a stickler about this type of thing. Have you succeeded in tracking down Voightbeer? Okay, that explains uh, he got away. I was a bit confused as to what happened to him. Wait, Abelard, there is an altogether more pressing problem. I do not wish to be rogue trader. No, I'm, I'm taking my role. I'm ready to start briefing. No. Um... What is on the agenda for this meeting? Reports on the condition of the ship and crew. The Lord Captain is not usually drawn away from her important affairs to attend such routine briefings, but this is a unique situation. I am still receiving updates from across the ship, and they are not encouraging. Getting this bird to fly could take a gargantuan effort, even so far as you personally negotiating with the authorities of the system we are currently in. So prepare to hear a bevy of complaints and excuses, your ladyship. Take this opportunity to get a good look at the officers who work six decks away from you from the bridge, and they in turn will have the honor of beholding the visage of their Lord Captain. Have you succeeded in tracking down Voightfear? Adelard grits his teeth. No, Lord Captain. In all the commotion, his trail went cold. Our people are still on the hunt for him, and any mutineers who may still be skulking in the ship's many corridors. But frankly, I would not be surprised to hear but we are now one shuttle short. I'm afraid that it will be some time before he answers for all that he has wrought. Okay. I'm ready to start the briefing. Summon the officers. With a gesture, Abelard relays the order of the adjutants at the or re relays the order to the adjutants at the far end of the magnificent chamber. All right. I I I don't need the consumables here. Right, so this is this is our crew. These are the officers. Oh, they all look uh, unique. Cool. A dozen pair of eyes bore into you. The expressions revealing restraint, joy, curiosity, and wariness. Makes sense. You know, they they don't know what to make of me yet. I'm sitting here on my chair. You know, being a rogue trader. Attention, officers! You have been granted an honor. Lord Captain Cyrene von Valancius will personally conduct today's briefing. A most gracious Lord Captain is ready to hear your reports. Perhaps you would introduce those present, Abelard. 
As you wish, your ladyship. Abelard points to a tall, slender woman whose body seems to contain as many implants as it does flesh. Vigdis Suri, o Vigdis Suri Otta of the Toliman line, our new Vox Master. That's probably her. Vox Master is the Master of Communication. Ooh, she looks cool. It is an honor to serve your ladyship. The Vox Master offers a deep bow. Aboard this vessel, you have at your command thousands of crew members and hundreds of officers and section chiefs. I am responsible for receiving, processing, and sending all communications between you and them, as well as external sources. I am your eyes and mouth, Lord Captain. All right. Beside her is Ravor, the Master Helmsman. He steers our ship along the course set by the Lord Captain and monitors the void around us to ensure that we do not stray into an asteroid field or a pirate trap. The bearded man, with pale, almost transparent skin, large dark circles under his eyes, and a dour expression that seems hardwired into his face gives a sullen nod. Alright, so he's 100% of Voidborn. All of that stuff is very Voidborn uh, characteristics. Hail, Lord Captain. This here ship's as good as home to me, so rest assured she's in safe hands. I'll die before I let her come to any grief. Alright. And lastly, our high factotum Janris Danrock, who oversees supplies, procurement, and the general material well-being of the ship. Dressed in an embroidered jacket, the heavy-set man with oiled hair offers an obsequious smile and bows. It is an honor, your ladyship. You may trust me with all matters concerning your comfort. Everything will be done to the highest standard. In the second row, we have the three officers charged with overseeing the ship's vital functions. Master of Ordnance is responsible for the artillery aboard, the Infernus Master, whose crew work to prevent and extinguish fires on the ship, and lastly, the Drives Master, servant of the Omnissiah. The three officers salute you. The Infernus Master does so with confidence, while the Master of Ordnance betrays his nervousness. The Drives Master offers a salute resembling a dance, involving a particularly complicated manipulation of all the Tech Priest's mechadendrites. <laughs> so that's that one. <laughs> mechadendrites, by the way, are tentacle-like robotic limb prosthetics surgically attached to the spine. Most Tech Priests have them. Is that everyone? Unfortunately, our choir master, the esteemed Zachary Weiss, head of the Astropath section, is unable to join us. He is in charge of communication with distant star systems. Master Weiss has been in a trance for some time now, attempting to contact other planets in the Von Balancius Protectorate and inform them of Lady Theodora's passing and Conrad Voigtbeer's treachery. I will deliver a report to your ladyship on the Astropath's progress as soon as it is possible. So she's the master of, like, in-system communications and on-ship communications. Astropaths are how you communicate faster than light. They do this by singing into the warp. It is very unreliable and very dangerous to the poor astropaths that have to send and receive communications. Astropaths dying is always, like, the first sign something bad is happening in a system. Enemy ship translates, or a chaos ship translates into a system, all the astropaths fucking go insane and, you know, eat their own eyeballs. Tyranids show up, uh, all the astropaths in the system suffer an even worse fate. It, it sucks to be an astropath. Oh wait, they don't have eyeballs. They can't eat them. Uh, who knows? Yeah, uh, you lose your eyes when you become an astropath. All others present are adjutants, secretaries, and deputies. They are here to make a recording of the proceedings. Very well. I wish to hear the Infernus Master's report. Alright, Faisal Nalzi. Cool name. Faisal is, uh, Arabic. Yes, Lord Captain. The tall young man bows his head in deference. I can report that all fires across the deck have now been extinguished. The preliminary damage assessment in terms of material losses and crew casualties has been completed. The results have been submitted to the Seneschal and the High Factotum. The post passed to him after the previous Infernus Master and his next three deputies expired in the line of duty. Abelard remarks in a low voice, pitched for your ears only. The lad is managing well so far. He can take the heat, so to speak. <laughs> Get it? Because <laughs> he's, the, he's the fire control guy? <laughs> Abelard. What a dude. Alright. 
I fact totem. What have you to report? We are toiling day and night to compile a full account of the losses. The task will require next to no involvement from your ladyship. I will personally ensure that all the damaged components are given into the tech priest's hands for attention and that all lost supplies are replaced. There is only one resource I cannot replenish single-handedly, and that is people. We lost more than 2,000 crew members, and unfortunately, this number is not confined to the scum from the lower decks, which are easily replaced, but also includes trained professionals. Most unfortunate. We will be able to make up our losses on the nearest planet, Rykard Banoris. However, the planet, the whole system in fact, belongs to the Winter Scale Rogue Trader Dynasty. We cannot simply begin recruiting on the planet without first coming to an understanding with the Governor. In that respect, I am powerless. Negotiations at this level are a matter for the Rogue Trader. Ah oh, yeah, that, that, that would be me. Especially true given Caligos Winter Scale's penchant for attacking first and asking questions later, and the kind of thick-skulled thugs he usually installs as governors on his planets. So yeah, the Winter Scale Dynasty. I reckon we'll get more information about them later. I know they're one of the like major dynasties in the Calixus sector. Coronas Expanse. They're from the book. I'm pretty sure they're from the book. I, I remember the name. Drives Master, I will hear from you now. Zira Talar, also a cool name. That's our tech priest. A voice distorted by a Vox retranslator emerges from under the tech priest's scarlet hood. Lord Captain, the foes that set upon this noble void ship destroyed the repositories of hundreds of machine spirits. The great warp engine entrusted into my charge is unharmed, thank the Omnissiah, but its spirit mourns its dead brethren. We have not yet identified a prayer protocol capable of assuaging its sorrow and anger. With great sorrow, I must also report that the Engine Seer Prime Overseer and spiritual authority of all tech priests aboard fell in battle. The Magos was betrayed by the little flesh that remained of him. A most terrible loss. There is no one among my comrades aboard whose experience and comprehension of the sacred protocols equals that of the fallen Magos. We require a replacement, and as soon as possible. I see. Thank you. I can understand his words quite well. The tech priest bows her head. Ah, it's a her. I mean, it's, it doesn't matter so much anymore. They're, uh... When you're like 80% machine... <laughs> Such things uh, don't matter. Also, the uh, you know, the Adeptus Mechanicus is all about shedding as much humanity as possible. So. Master Helmsman, deliver your status report. What you are, Lord Captain? To cut out a long story, or to cut a long story short, the outlook is bleak. Is bleak. God damn it. The ship's down, more or less, but without our engine, see a prime and navigator who fell in battle. We have no way out of the system. If we try to set so much as toe inside the warp, I don't know what'll happen first. A warp drive being torn to pieces, or all of us melting into the bulkheads. Neither of those sound great. Your ladyship, if you would allow me to interject. When we arrived in this system, my crew followed standard protocols and conducted a count of all available communication channels in the region. One of them was a Navis Nobilite station. The station maintains complete Vox silence, but even its presence here inspires hope. To have located a navigator in this very same system is an incredible stroke of luck. A true blessing from the God Emperor. That's going to be our first course of action. We absolutely need to fetch ourselves a navigator or we will never leave this place. A sharp bolt of pain lances through your skull as if in response to what you just heard. You understand that it is not the God Emperor you should thank for such good fortune. The words of the demon that appeared before you during the translation to real space echo in your mind. I am the will of the Weaver of Destinies, and today I will weave a new thread of elusive possibilities and fickle chances. The thread that will lead you out of the maw of irreversibility. The thread that will help you find the keys to salvation. Oh good. Fucking... Just, just great. Perfect. We've been caught in a Zinchian demon schemes. I'm sure nothing bad will come from this. If I were you, I'd grab this chance with both hands. 
or else you'll soon be eyeing up asteroids to use as your new residence. In slightly less shitty news, we can go round and round this system till our heads are swimming, as long as the Promethean and supplies last. And if any thick as grok shit lowlifes come sniffing around, we'll be able to take them out. So don't you worry on that score. Master of Ordinance, do you have anything to report? Ashar Nitalomo. The Master of Ordinance gives you a gloomy look. No, my job's simple. Maintain the arsenal and fire where I'm told. Just ask anyone. We've got no able crew. No Lord Captain. Ooh. Master of Ordinance, you forget yourself. The Master of Ordinance choked back the words he was obviously about to blurt out without thinking. He casts another look at you before lowering his gaze. I apologize profusely, Lord Captain. Pardon the fool. The ship is in ruins. Every other officer is dead, and the Lord Captain is no longer with us. Fear has taken hold of me. He looks up at you. But I've heard of you. Oh, yes. Your fame has reached even as far as the expanse. I can't be showing myself up in front of an illustrious person such as yourself. He adjusts his uniform and stands ramrod straight. The Master of Ordnance can report that the rest of the arsenal has been saved and the battery is in good order. We are ready to fight, if that is the Lord Captain's will. To summarize, we have sustained serious losses in crew members, and we require a new engine seer prime and navigator. Is this all that is preventing us from continuing the voyage? Precisely, Lord Captain. But bear in mind that this will not be the end of our trials. The ship's systems will be properly inspected for major damage, which can only be carried out at Footfall Station. Ah, fucking Footfall, all right. Massive void port on the edge of Coronus Expanse and a notorious hotbed of vice trade and rogue trader intrigue. I love this place. I have definitely uh, sent people here before in a campaign. <laughs> Anyways, the ship systems must be properly inspected for major damage, which can only be carried out at Footfall Station, home to only, home to the only dockyard in the sector. But we will never reach Footfall without first solving these three immediate problems. What can you tell us about the system in which we currently find ourselves? I see to the Voxmaster on this point, Mistress Toleman. Holloman Victus. Full name. We're in the Rakad star system, and the voyage here was undertaken on the orders of your ladyship's predecessor. There are three inhabited bodies in this system, and our attempts to send Vox messages have produced confounding results. The Navis Nobilite station has, sim has not simply failed to answer. It seems to be maintaining total Vox silence. However, we did receive a distress signal from the prison planetoid in the system and Ricard Minoris itself is also not responding to our hails. But what is most alarming is that our augurs have intercepted signals from the surface that seem to indicate ongoing hostilities on the planet. Hmm, wonder if that's related. Augurs, by the way, are sensor technology that allows void ships to scan planets, spot enemies, and obtain various other kinds of crucial data at great distances. Basically, it's our radar. Cooler name for a radar. The station is not... Or the situation is not very encouraging, but without a navigator, a tech priest, and new crew members, we won't be able to travel anywhere. Therefore, we must go to the planet and the Navis Nobilite Station and find out what is going on. Thank you for all your reports. Dismissed. The assembled officers salute you as one. <laughs> I said we were going to end the episode, because <laughs> that's not happening. <laughs> your ladyship, there's one other thing. A confidential matter of the utmost importance. Lady Theodora. Avalard hesitates. Your eternally esteemed predecessor brought the ship here to this system for a reason. She was given a secret commission. You perhaps are wondering who has the authority to commission a rogue trader to do anything? Ah, Inquisition. And I shall tell you, the Lord Inquisition, the Hand of the Emperor, the Chief Architect, or the Lord Inquisitor, the Hand of the Emperor, the Chief Architect, of his will in the Coronus Expanse. Lord Inquisitor, huh? Yeah, yeah. So Lord Inquisitor is the boss of the sector's uh, inquisitorial forces. And Coronus Expanse, a scattered, poorly explored region on the frontier of the Imperium, full of fearsome Xenos, treasure, heathen worlds, and the echoes of ancient doom. Oh, God. Oh, are we dealing with the Yuvath? Is that the antagonist here? This might not be a Zinch Demon, this may be Yuvath related, which is very chaos related. I'm not going to explain what the Yuvath are at all. I'm just making a educated guess right now. 
Just so that I can say, ah, oh, I fucking knew it. Or, you know, be wrong, I guess. Alright, uh... I would be honored to fulfill the Inquisitor's commission. What is it he asked of Theodora? Or, I came across a strange handwritten letter on Theodora's desk. It was signed XC. You are referring to the contents of that note, I presume. Yes, quite right. XC. Xavier Calcazar. Yep, sounds like an Inquisitor. Lady Theodora was to seek out the Lord Inquisitor's right hand man, one Heinrichs van Kalox, an interrogator, you understand. An interrogator is basically a underling of an Inquisitor, but is the boss of the Inquisitor's underlings. He's the one that's doing a lot of the, like, away missions for an Inquisitor uh, at the head of an Inquisitorial Acolyte team. All I know is that he is somewhere in this system that we must find him and offer him whatever assistance he requires and then deliver him to football in the Furibundus system. Finding him without any more information to go on will be difficult indeed, but an Inquisitor is an important individual. The authorities in the system, either the Navis Nobilite or the Governor of Ricard Minoris, may know something. It's going to be really handy if we get in the good graces of the Inquisition. That is all of it, your ladyship. You have a great deal of work ahead of you, but it is a mere taste of the daily burden of a rogue trader. Soon you must take up the reins of the Von Valancius Protectorate. Abelard gives you another scrutinizing look, as if trying to gauge how long you will hold out under this mountain of problems. His face softens slightly, and it seems he is about to offer some words of encouragement. Oh no. Idira, Sister Argenta, explain yourselves. The Sister of Battle grimly nods towards Idira. The Psyker is suffering some ailment, or dark madness. She insisted on seeing the rogue traitor. I judge that it would be unwise to leave her unsupervised. AKA, anything happens, bolt gun round to the head is what Argenta <laughs> means here. <laughs> Which, uh, you know, given what happened to the last person that got, the last Psyker that got infected by warp madness, I, being a Psyker myself, I'm not against this sort of thing. <laughs> For a brief moment, Sister Argenta's voice sounds hesitant. I was also hoping to approach you with a personal request, but it can wait. Speak with me when you have time, rogue traitor. Idira's eyes, glazed eyes, rove over the assembled. One word bursts from her lips. Daybreak. Uh-oh. Don't like that word anymore, that's for sure. Idira, come to your senses. Damn it! Idira presses her fingers to her temples in desperation. Your ladyship! Here's the thing. I was trying to see the immediate future, and it hit me so hard. My head is still spinning. Something very strange is heading our way, and I can't make out what it is. No matter how hard I try, a single word is all I can make out. Daybreak. Or maybe it's dawn. And it's ringing. And ringing like an echo. Like a bell. But if it's daybreak, then why is it so dark? Uh, Skaven? Uh, I, I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. We cannot extract any information of value from a single word. Can you tell us anything else, Mistress Tlas? Idira Tlas, that was her name. No, not yet anyways. The voices are going berserk, all shouting at once. I can't make sense of any of it. As soon as I know or sense anything, I'll report it, alright? Lord Captain, if you want me to take a closer look into your future, find me on the bridge and we can talk. Lady Theodora was well served by my whispers on many occasions, and I'm sure you would benefit from them as well. Psyker's bitten lips stretch into a wry smile. If there's nothing else of value to report, I declare this briefing concluded. It is time to get to work. Nice. It is also time to end the episode. This is a long episode. I don't know how long. Yeah, it's probably gonna be like two hours. Over two hours. Uh, my apologies for the length. I tend to just end episodes where it makes sense to end them rather than stick to any sort of strict timetable. So, I hope you guys don't mind. Uh, they could be anywhere between an hour and two hours in length, generally. I don't tend to do them shorter than then unless I am suffering some sort of actual time constraint myself. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed it, please drop this video a like. And uh, thank you to everybody that has left comments. I have not been able to read the comments on the previous episode because I have recorded this episode before the previous episode is even released on YouTube. So that would be why. I will uh, 
get to everybody's comments and act on any feedback you guys have given after that. After the previous episode comes out, of course. So, yeah, that's uh, that's going to be all. Catch you all in the next one. Ash Herder out, and death to the False Emperor.